Welcome, everybody, to the Difference Is You show. I've got Peter Lynn here. Peter, I, I was actually, I, I was recording when you were setting up your trombone. Oh. And uh, I had the, the jazz music going. This is the first time I've ever not played my own intro music for the audience because I was like, well, why, why lose the opportunity to um, play something that's meaningful? I mean, I got a, a musician here that's got his own production music company. I mean, I got to play something. And um, so you'll hear it on the replay. Obviously, you couldn't hear it. I haven't figured out how to <laughs> run it through the mic yet. All good. All good. But um, I, I know a lot about you. You obviously know yourself better. Why don't I give you the <laughs> opportunity to introduce yourself to the crowd? We've got Peter Lynn uh, Yarbird Entertainment, if I said it the right way. That's correct. Yeah, All right. that's correct. Um, yeah, so I'll just give a short intro of myself. Uh, my name is Peter Lin. I am a Taiwanese American uh, jazz musician. That's Taiwanese in the house. Taiwanese. <laughs> Taiwan beer actually here today. Oh, too, I'm, I'm ripping well. uh, the Japanese today. That's right. But That's I am right. Taiwanese too, so yes. I, we're not sponsored by them, by the way. Uh, <laughs> that'll we be nice. should be, man, in the future, man. Imagine that, dude. Come on, Joe Rogan. Here you go. The Asian, the Asian Joe Rogan in the house, everybody. <laughs> Let's fucking go. Come on. Uh, yeah, so uh, where was I? Okay, so yeah, my name is Peter Lin, Taiwanese American jazz musician. Um, I've been playing professionally for uh, about 10 years, okay. maybe a little over that. Um, I grew up in New Jersey myself, uh, okay. North Jersey specifically, uh, represent. And uh, I live pretty close to New York City, mm -hmm. and I've been working professionally between here in Jersey and the city and, you know, uh, traveling a little bit around the world uh, mm -hmm. to perform as well. Wow, nice. And yeah, I have two albums out myself. What? Uh, first ones, yeah, okay. the first one's called With Respect, which is a um, Taiwanese and Chinese music uh, in a jazz style, Ooh. actually, like some, some folk music. That Dude, I got to listen to this. I have to. <laughs> yeah it's um a lot of people really enjoy it because it reminds them of like uh you know it's kind of like our parents generation yeah. like um karaoke music that they sang uh and i put it like in a jazz like you know style Wonderful. uh with like all these killer musicians in this in the area oh that's great um, and my second album's called new age old ways okay um and it's actually it's original music that i composed myself however um it also came with a comic book um that i kind of created uh my friend kelly lynn no relation uh over <laughs> nice. in chicago uh yeah she, she helped illustrate it um the the comic book and that wow. was that was a project yeah for sure so um yeah the music in, in terms of like myself that's pretty much uh i would say 80 percent of my being at, wow at, man you know 80 yeah. percent of my being is laziness <laughs> Okay, so that's that's pretty good there, bro. Well, well, you know what? Maybe it is eighty percent laziness and twenty percent. <laughs> well, well, what makes up the other twenty percent then? Let's, let's round it out. What, what's the other hundred percent of Peter yeah, Lynn? So all the other non-music things uh, include trying to become basically like this uh, entrepreneur type person. Um, I have a business called Yarbrough Entertainment, which okay. you. Um, you said earlier okay. and um i run that with actually my other friend who's uh, mexican american actually himself okay. and um we're both jazz musicians and we started this company because we wanted to book um other jazz artists that we believed in uh to do events such as uh corporate events weddings and all different kinds of you know places that need music basically so we were a booking company nice uh, for okay. about two years all right and uh turned over into a audio video and live stream production ever since covid hit uh all of our gigs were lost you know that's, that's yeah. basically what happened right like yeah. uh i was i was supposed to play all the way up to new year's eve uh -huh. and uh all that is gone so uh we had to switch to our second like 
that skill. And for us, that was the audio, video, and live stream production side. Uh, so we've been doing a lot of that for different people and organizations. Um, great, great. Well, yeah. congratulations on on pivoting. I mean, would you would you say you're uh, you've been successful since COVID? Are are you struggling? Are do you, are you coming up? You know, where, how's the revenue going? If you don't mind sharing. Yeah, yeah. No, no, not at all. Um, you know. Luckily, we have been able to sustain ourselves. Okay. Um, dude, sustain is better this. than going out of business, brother. Yeah. Dude, to totally, totally. And look, you know, um, it's a really hard time for, especially for people in yeah. industries yeah. where uh, COVID has shut down business. Mm -hmm. And, you know, a lot of musicians are living, a lot of people don't know this, but a lot of musicians are living like gig by gig. They go like, okay, this like 50, $100 is going to carry me for the next few days. I mean, I think that was right. like like known before COVID. I don't even know what's going on <laughs> since COVID, That's true. man. That's true. And, um, you know, uh, a lot of my musician friends are, you know, the ones I don't hear from is the ones that I worry about, right? Oh, the ones man, I hear yeah. from, they, they're fine because a lot of times they'll tell me, oh, you know, between unemployment and like some, you know, some other things that's going on in their lives, sure, you know. But, you know, for most people uh, that, I know that are true artists, right? And just yeah. like that's music is their being. It's it's a really hard time uh, for them. So you know that that's something that uh, I'm trying to think of ways to help out the musician community uh, during this time using technology. You know, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of times the musicians that's the last thing we want to think about, like yeah. how, you know going on the computer and doing stuff. But I know, I know. Uh, you know, like I I just made a, a video. It was fitness related, but mm -hmm. the the concept still applies where I was like, everything's about perspective. Yeah, yeah, there's obvious mm -hmm. good and bad, right? COVID is an obvious bad event, but I think just some things that you mentioned are the, the good perspective is like, well, you know, the same thing with, with how music evolved through, through Napster and now Spotify, right? At first, the music uh, industry execs were like very against the internet and then they embraced it, right? I see the same thing happening, exactly what you did. You were doing live events. Now, you know, you're doing live broadcasting, and, and really maximizing the value of technology. So, you know, in, in a, a weird, ironic way, COVID could be good for the world, kind of forcing people to embrace what was already there for 20 years, just, you know, the, and, and then now technology is so, like, uh, I mean, I would say 10, even, you know, 10 years ago, five years ago, even, like what I'm doing now would be very expensive, you know, but now broadband has caught up with, mm -hmm. with what we're able to stream in HD now. So uh, pretty much it's just that it makes it, it evens the playing field. Like anybody with just some simple tech, uh, hardware, a, a PC, a laptop can stream. You don't even need that good of a camera, that good of a microphone. Yeah, it's good if you got better equipment, but you don't need that. You can literally stream with, with the iPhone, even an older iPhone, right? Yeah, that's right. And I think um, it, it definitely opens up doors for a lot of people that are able to handle the technology. The only thing I do worry about is definitely um, artists' rights, which is has always been like mm -hmm. a thing since the beginning of the music industry. Yeah, um, musicians have always been taken advantage of it mm -hmm. when it comes to like how how are they actually monetizing off of their artistry, right? Mm -hmm. And um, a lot of times you'll see that you know streaming platforms like Spotify and mm -hmm. iTunes. I mean, look, you know, I have two albums out and I'll say that between those two albums and, you know, the amount of radio time and, and uh, people downloading my music mm -hmm. and buying it, I probably only made like, um, I, want, I want to say maybe a thousand max mm -hmm. from those two albums. Wow. And it costs at least what, like between five thousand and ten thousand dollars per album at least you know mm -hmm. if, if you're not crowdfunding and stuff mm -hmm. like that so well th thanks like, for being so open a lot of people are just yeah. embarrassed to share any kind of that information you know right. that that's really awesome that you just make yourself vulnerable share it you know encourage other people known. yeah 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 well what that, um what, what's the trade because here's uh i've always had you know i don't have so much the uh the musician's perspective as far as i'm a consumer i'm not really the creator as far as this type of stuff mm. and you know i'm the one pirating music since i was in high school and <laughs> like you we know, all do it <laughs> right yeah i mean like <laughs> and, and so i look at it from that perspective like well like i if if i had to pay for everything i would never be introduced to anything other than the the like the four or five mm. songs that they play on the radio right so what what is like 
I know there's like some artist like is it Moby that's just like give it away for free? Who gives a fuck? You know, there's like two sides that's of the right. coin, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think uh, one thing is definitely exposing more people to the music. Um, it's definitely a wonderful thing and mm -hmm. it's, it's global. It's a global reach, you know, mm -hmm. and, uh, as, as the years go on, technology improves, we're just going to see, like, uh, there's going to be more availability of music that might've been underground before, but mm -hmm. now is like super popular. Right. Mm -hmm. And, um, I think it's, it's, you know, there's always, yeah, it's always two sides of the coin with that stuff, right? Like some things improve and some mm -hmm. things just never <laughs> improve mm -hmm. um and so like um yeah i try i try to stay positive when it comes to um you know how, how i how i'm thinking about it I, I think at this point uh if you're a musician um you know full time you know that music is not performance it's not going to carry you a hundred percent of the way there's only like the top one percent of musicians just like in society that mm -hmm. are able to perform a hundred percent and make all their money and survive and you know be fruitful i mean that's um that's really uh um a, what is it called like uh it, a shitty way to know. make a living i don't know what you're trying to say <laughs> I, yeah, no it's, it's a good way of making a living yeah. like you know it's um it's it's really nice for yeah. sure to be able to have that opportunity to do it um but but a lot of people are not offered that and so that, yeah. that that's something that we're always trying to like fight for you i know? mean like I, I have my kind of art you know what yeah. i'm saying like this podcast is is my art form because i don't have like a classical art form like there when you when when people say artist you, you literally think of two things the literal the painter artist and then maybe the musical artist and then maybe if if your brain works That's that right. way the uh the actor's kind of artistry right mm. um drama yeah. those kind of arts and so it, and uh peter i don't know how old you are but i'm i'm 37 we never know with asian people man oh you know? shoot man yeah, you look like super I, yeah, young i'm yeah. 30 man yeah i mean wow. like yeah you never know with with asians i i still get carded for like literally at ralph's they still charge you know <laughs> card me for this kind of shit right but dude um, you look young even wow. even with my mustache they're like that mustache don't fool me i'm carding you bro <laughs> but no now i now i appreciate it um but uh so I don't even know what I'm talking about now. Um, but no, that that's about? amazing. Actually, that you said that I'm like, wow, 37. Jeez, that's uh, yeah, yeah. What are we talking? I'm, I have like ADD, and so I like I will go on a rant and then forget Dude. what the hell we were talking about. It, it's 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 all good. Um, I, I think most of it has been pretty uh, wrapped up there in terms of like uh, just the state of what it's like to try to just be a musician, mm -hmm. like performing. 100% of the time um, and we, we just have to accept that it's not that's just not the way it is now right and we have to find ways to uh, make make it beneficial like be able to continue our art form mm -hmm. oh this, this is what I was going to say um, mm -hmm. this is something I heard is there's a big difference between artists and entertainers sometimes mm -hmm. they're one mm -hmm. in the same right yeah, yeah. but Artist sometimes entertainer. okay yeah exactly like um, the entertainment industry when we say that um you know usually is very specific a lot of people think more like comedy and pop music and and stuff that like people are entertained by right but then there's like this other side of the uh, musician or actor or they, they have this artist side that goes like hey i want to do this and i don't care what anyone thinks mm -hmm. and it just mm -hmm. needs to be put out there in the world mm -hmm. because it's mm -hmm. super mm -hmm. fulfilling and that's the that's the shit that doesn't get um uh, you know, like pop publicized all mm -hmm, the time, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. uh, because it's not it's not the level of entertainment that people are used to having. Um, you know, something that's like immediate, something that's um, kind of like uh, a fad, mm -hmm. right? Um, but art lasts forever mm -hmm. for sure. That's, there's no doubt about that. Why well, I identify with with that statement you just said. Like, I just need to put this out. That's literally like. You just That's encapsulated right. like the energy for me that like, why I started this. Like I call it a podcast, but it's like more than it's a video, right? Like I call it mm -hmm. a podcast because it sounds cooler to say that I have a podcast than a YouTube show, <laughs> but like a YouTube show is actually like 10 times better than a podcast, right? Like, like yeah, in my opinion, it, 
the funny thing is it's like harder to get on Spotify than it is to get on YouTube. You know, like you get on <laughs> YouTube, it's just one, you just drag something to this folder and you're automatically on YouTube. That's but right. Like in Spotify, That's right. you have to go through a third party and then like, what the, what the fuck? Yeah. I still, yeah. I'm on episode 12 of my YouTube show. I still can't decide which third party company I want to use to get on Spotify, right? <laughs> Do you yeah. have a recommendation for me? I don't give a shit about monetization, you know? Like, I, I just yeah, want, yeah. like, the. I don't even know. Like, I'd rather not pay. I mean, if, if I'm making money, I don't mind mm. paying, right? But I don't want to get hooked into a platform that I end up regretting. And then so I'm like, Buzzsprout, there's a, this and that and whatever, .fm. I don't even... Anchor, right? I'm looking at Anchor. <laughs> yeah, Anchor is a big one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What sure. you? Hey, help me out here. Help me pick one. Dude, no, uh, mo most of my recommendations would be through uh, if you're trying to release an album on all the major platforms. So I, I can't really help you with the podcast. Well, okay, help, though, help, help out somebody watching that might be an up and coming musician. Then. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. Okay, good point. Good point. So, um, so for musicians that are trying to be independent, mm -hmm. meaning they're not trying to be on a record label. Okay. Um, this means you're doing everything yourself. Okay. And I mean everything. Okay. So, um, one of the big factors that, you know, a lot of people look at is, Hey, are you on iTunes? Are you on Spotify yeah. and major yeah. platforms? Right. There's actually a, a couple of big distributors that are, uh, more independent line. All you got to do is basically sign up to their website. Um, it's usually a smaller fee depending on which uh, distribution company you go to. Uh -huh. Um, and then they help you to distribute your music to iTunes, Spotify. So they, they kind of like make that process really easy, but mm -hmm. they take like a little shaving off the top mm -hmm. every single time you get royalties. Mm -hmm. that, that's what happens. So um, the one I use is called CD Baby. Okay. And uh, I've been using CD Baby for the past two albums uh, with no problems. Aren't they like uh, an well, old, old company? I've heard that name for like a long time. They are an older company. Time, right, yeah. Yeah, they definitely helped like millions i want to say of like artists wow, because yeah. basically you know um the record label industry is kind of um you have to be very specific if you want to be on a record label you um nowadays because uh -huh. uh, record labels used to take care of more of your stuff meaning the publicizing the record uh like creation itself um fronting a lot of money to make the record happen yeah that doesn't happen as much anymore. Okay. And it's becoming less that now they're basically saying, well, either like, we'll we'll take your royalties and in exchange for that, you'll get all this, yeah. you know, other services for free. Yeah. You know? And unfortunately, unless you're in the top 1% of record companies, again, you know, a lot, a lot of those things are not um, available to you. So, uh, a lot of times people like going independent because basically they get to keep a larger share of, course. of what they do. Mm -hmm. And um, if you ever get your music in like a movie or Netflix, which mm -hmm. is kind of like every musician's dream, okay. then, <laughs> then you're really making royalties. Oh, for sure. Like sync licensing is a huge uh, topic. Yeah. Um, but yeah, people who are looking to get started, like if you want to just be releasing something, uh, like a single or an album, like, yeah, definitely go through CD Baby. They have probably the cheapest rates and make it the easiest for you to be able to distribute your music okay. worldwide. Cool, cool. Um, I, I had made a note I wanted to ask you. I'm, I'm pretty sure you're familiar with this. Uh, Patreon, are you familiar with Patreon? Mm -hmm. If so, what, what level of familiarity? What's your opinion on that? Yeah, so Patreon, uh, for people who don't know, uh, Patreon is a platform where it's a subscription based model, yeah. where, um, you know, and an artist or whoever is trying to basically sell their product or art, uh, they basically have these monthly subscribers that pay at different levels. And depending on which level you're on, you get different perks, right? Like, so if you're on level one, they're like, oh, you, you get to watch my videos. But if you're on level two, then mm -hmm. you get to uh, be, you get a shout out on mm -hmm. the video, right? It's like, um, a, it's like a monthly, Kickstarter, right? Kickstarter is a one-time funding. Patreon is a monthly subscription. Support the artist. That's, That's right. right. And originally, uh, it was 
kind of good. I mean, for sure, like mm -hmm. he worked it out. Uh, but I think recently it's kind of taken a dip. And I know they actually they actually only added a uh, sales tax recently. Uh -huh. Apparently they need sales tax. And uh, I, I don't know how that works. Uh, <laughs> don't ask me, but that makes it harder for yeah. the uh, whatever artist. But um, I think it works if you have a larger base. Again, mm -hmm. they always take a percentage. And a lot of people don't know that, but um, a lot of these platforms, you know, they're not just doing it out of the kindness of their hearts. They're doing it as a business. Of course. Right? Yeah. So if they're not going to make any money off it, then they're not going to want to continue improving upon the product and whatnot. Mm -hmm. So um, Patreon is good if you have a lot of people who are willing to um, dish out money every month to see what you create. I think I think it's a great idea for sure. Subscription based models are in right now, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, but I don't know. It's for me. I'm always trying to think of ways where it's like, man, uh, where can we put money into the right people's hands? Right. I don't want to give it to a multi million dollar company. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, I want to put it so that it's equally distributed between artists and then like uh, whoever else is involved in a way that's super transparent. And also like, um, I don't know, just easy to use. I, I'm, I'm always trying to think of, of those things, uh, trying I mean, to do things but, myself. But I know? mean, like, don't, don't you yeah. feel like it's like the money gets in the way, like the platform is good and then it, their fee, it's kind of wherever the fee falls, you know, there's that wherever, you know, below this point, it'd be good. And then it's like, because they get the monopoly, then they raise it to where they know they can charge. Right. It, it, obviously, like the if, if Patreon was 100 percent, you get all the revenue and they were literally like a nonprofit and they just, you know, charged yep. what they needed for the server space. Right. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Uh, you know, they, they these pl these places do need to take a cut. There's mm. there's no doubt about it. Um, I guess what I was uh, saying is depending on what kind of art you're selling, it might not be as beneficial uh, in, in that respect to like. Mm -hmm. Um, especially if it's like not that many subscribers, right? Like <laughs> if you had 10 per month and they were like subscribed at like, you know, $5 or something, mm -hmm. you know, and then Patreon's taking like 20% or whatever, mm -hmm. then, you know, is that really worth it to put in all the work to, to upkeep this Patreon, put out your art? Well, you I don't know, have like a lot that. of experience with Patreon. I'm just thinking hypothetical here, right? Like, yeah. you know, let's say I end up, liking jazz and I want to support Peter Lin. Right. And then you're mm -hmm. on there and I know, man, it takes, it's not like we expect you to be putting out single after single every day, but maybe <laughs> people just want to see what's going on in your daily life. And, and then, you know, and they would pay just to see you like literally what you would put out on Snapchat and Instagram. Maybe if you just put that on Patreon, that would make people happy. Like maybe you still just release however many singles that you would in a year, but, you know, they, they support and then you, you keep them happy by just uh, that's what I would assume. Like, all right, you know, here's this guy <laughs> going to the grocery store, going to Ralph's. Here's me and my wife. Here's what we had for dinner. I don't know. Right. And then just here's my thoughts, you know, and only you guys, you know what I'm saying? Like, think, I think like it works that. if they're interesting people. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, uh, if that's entertainment to them. Yeah. They're willing to put money into it. That's for sure. Like, it's like the exclusivity. Like, we're the only ones allowed into Peter Lin's inner life. You know, right. you're not then putting it out on Instagram and Snapchat anymore. Yeah. Then you're getting paid and you're saying, you know what? This is my inner circle. You guys are supporting me. I, I let you guys in into my life and you see what happens. That's kind of how I see it because, you know, it's mm -hmm. like, look, I do this podcast, right? I'm an introvert. You know, I used to have like, mm -hmm. you know, back to back, maybe three podcasts in a day. And then, uh, and I, like, like that only happened a few times. But if like, I do two podcasts back to back, I'm like, man. Like the, a, like the second <laughs> one, I just, I felt like I didn't give it my all. I mean, I feel like mm -hmm. if I have all day to prepare for just one, I'm cool, right. you know, but if I'm doing yeah. it like, you know, every day to, to, to a day, it's just like, dude, it's not going to be as, as good as I want it to be. And the same thing, right. Producing music, if you're forced to do it, right. Exactly. That's right. And, and you hit the nail on the head. That's why it's hard to do something like that for Patreon because, uh, you know, as artists, we, that, that's the hard part, right? Like, it's like uh, you could output content every day. Anyone can really 
It's going to get that. shittier right. the more the more volume to less the quality for everything. It, exactly. McDonald's I, down down to music, right? <laughs> yeah. Hamburgers down down to music singles. <laughs> some people don't care about, yeah. you know, let's put it this way. Some people don't care about quality of whatever they're putting out because to them it's more important to just put it out there and I'm I'm cool with that, you know what I'm saying? But I I think a lot of people's personalities, especially if they're like on the more artistry side rather than entertainment mm -hmm, side, mm -hmm. they're like, no, I, I want to like prepare this. Yeah, I want to make yeah. it like a package yep. so that when it's put out, it's like, this is, this is some real. Yeah. Um, and that's why the Patreon model probably is not the, the best solution for at least musician type of mm -hmm. art. So what, what, yeah. What, so then what about, uh, obviously this is like even worse than Twitch live streaming. Um, where, where do you see that? Obviously you're mm -hmm. in live streaming, but you don't rely on, twitch to make your money right that's correct so um okay so live streaming um right now the way it works is that a lot of artists are going on platforms like facebook youtube mm -hmm. instagram um yeah twitch uh and you know some of these have different forms of monetization for the musicians some of it's uh donation based but it's all over the place and oftentimes it does mm -hmm. not pay back the amount that you um, put into it, you know? Mm. And so, um, you know, it's not at the fault of whatever these live stream uh, platforms are because they're just trying to make a buck. They're just yeah. trying to like, you know, do their thing and, you know, hopefully people use it, right? Yeah, like that, and we're just, we just fall into that, right? Mm. Um, but uh, what we've been doing is we've been live streaming specifically for uh, other organizations that already have like, um, they have requirements through grants that they get as a nonprofit mm. to put on performances. And because there's no live performances, we have to uh, switch to a virtual space. And in that case, it's uh, live streaming. So yes, mm. we have done live streaming for uh, places like the National Jazz Museum in Harlem. Mm. Okay. Um, they are a uh, world renowned, you know, um, museum. And, you know, they put on performances a lot. And so we, we wow. actually produced a couple of their live streams. Wow. And, you know, we put on Facebook and, you know, because they're a nonprofit, we can ask for donations, right? Like straight up uh, off of Facebook. The last one we did, um, you know, they got like a thousand dollars in donation, which is like nice for, you know, uh, if they didn't pay any money to make it happen. Right. Yeah, but yeah. a lot of times they, uh, you're that not doesn't going even to even cover the costs even. Yeah. <laughs> Barely. Yeah. yeah. They yeah. paid for the musicians. They paid for us to be there, yeah. which is not cheap for yeah, sure. Yeah. Like, Auction companies cost a lot. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure the insurance for your equipment is is more than that. Oh yeah, well, yeah, yeah. I haven't like, oh man, yeah, we don't even have uh, the proper insurance. Yet. <laughs> <laughs> but that 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 that's to come, uh, most definitely. Yeah. Um, and property insurance as well. But uh, yeah. one thing we have been thinking of is basically doing a paywall system. Uh huh. For um, uh, as part of our website, uh, we're curating a series right now. Our first um, performance is going to be on Saturday. Uh -huh. And people pay $10 uh, for this live stream pass, essentially. And it's actually good for another 48 hours past the performance. If someone mm -hmm. can't make the time, they can still watch it for that 48 hours. I see. And it stays up. Um, but yeah, that's uh, in, the, in that sense, that's really a model where it's like, well, we know there's an insured a short amount of money mm -hmm. that would come in based off of X, Y, and Z mm -hmm. versus like live streaming today, which is, mm -hmm. uh, you know, okay. People might subscribe. People might donate, you know, those things are, I, mm -hmm. I don't like the uncertainty. Of course. <laughs> well, what, aspect. um, you know, I mean, you seem like a, a really good entrepreneur in that, man, you, 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 you pivoted. Have you seen friends by the way, the, the whole pivot? <laughs> That, uh, it reminds no, my, me of... my wife loves friends yeah. and I have yet to uh, oh, okay. indulge. And she's from China. So yeah. she's watching friends from China. I'm wow. here in America. I don't even watch. But yeah. like Well, mention the word pivot to her. See if she, okay. if she knows what she ep knows. episode I'm talking about. Because <laughs> okay. anyway, you got to watch it anyway. So because when I say pivot, it reminds me of that episode. But you've pivoted your, your business in the middle of COVID to, to capture like this huge opportunity and got a huge client in the National Jazz Museum uh, in Harlem, right? Yeah. And mm -hmm. so I wanted to ask you, okay, so you're like exploring different business models, the paywall. If you could design a system from the ground up, you know, like like Elon Musk is like mm -hmm. doing with with his electric cars and in right. space, what what is your utopia system for musicians? What does it look like? Man, that's a great question. That's a great question. I think the you uh, for me, 
Yeah. What it means is basically where it's super transparent about what a musician is able to make per performance and depending on i guess depending on like what level there are or whatnot you know but uh i'm imagining a, a world where um the experience of live music is essentially able to be become the uh, a thread of everyday life for mm. people um kind of the same way that uh netflix is mm, kind of a thread yeah. of way of life for people right because mm, you know okay. uh, the way we view live music right now is oh that's nice that's nice on a you know uh dinner date or that's i want to go check out this concert yeah. this one particular day I it's, like it. and then okay. every day though you know people listen to music though you know what i'm saying like <laughs> it's hard to find people that don't listen to music and if yeah. they don't i feel bad for them but yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know like um so for me I want to see a, I want to see a platform uh -huh. that's really easy to use where people are able to access, uh, music that is directly benefiting musicians and the way that that company works or however that software works is that they are able to monetize in different ways that doesn't take advantage of, uh, artists, artistries, you know, mm -hmm. it doesn't take uh, advantage of people's content that that's what i'm really mm -hmm. seeing mm -hmm. um and i believe that time can come because we have more accessibility to the technology that allows us mm -hmm. to to be that way um so yeah that's it's kind of um it's really hard i'll tell you you that. know what i from how you describe it i know it's like it's hard to get from where we are to where you want to be but it doesn't seem like harder than what what elon did with the, the electric cars or going to, to space you know it yeah like i feel like part of it is a hardware problem right getting like li literally like even you know having go a good pair of headphones even though they're widespread not everyone can afford a two three hundred dollar yeah. pair of headphones like, like look at mine man like mine i dropped mine <laughs> and it's like i had it cracked but the the wires are still there so i i electrical taped it but it do, like if i want to really block out the noise i have to press it against my ears right yeah i see these, that these fucking these beats by dre are not durable like if you're a skateboarder don't wear these motherfuckers they fell oh, off no. one time and they cracked and i almost started crying and then i'm like i picked it up and i'm like i can still hear i took it home and then i I duct tape it and like you Yo, beats by how... Dre. It's not is the is the biggest marketing scam. Sorry, right? I mean, no, <laughs> of I all agree. time. Yeah, I'm you like, know? Well, I'm like, I wish like I'm like these for for this much money. You would think like, look, I've got this twenty dollar pair of s skull candy. Oh yeah, skull candy. These motherfuckers are durable. Like <laughs> yes, you could they bend are. them every which way, put them under water. Fucking uh, chuck them at the wall. The fuckers won't break. These motherfuckers, <laughs> I was skateboarding, and I went like that. They fell off my head, and now I have electrical tape on it, man. And they, they don't even cancel yeah, the dude. noise anymore because I have to push it onto my ear. Yeah, yeah. Did you hear about uh, these guys? And I think it was somewhere in the Middle East. They figured out how to um, basically – uh get music into your head without you wearing headphones it's basically like wow. they send sonic waves dude i gotta send you an yeah, article that's it's, some military shit right there dude, bro um i'm a little scared about that but however i said that because you're, you're right about mm -hmm. you know um a lot of it ends up being the fact that you know this technology exists mm -hmm. but no one cares about using it in this context of music because it's not uh it's not a market that mm -hmm. people make money off of yeah you know what i'm saying like at this point they rather use that technology to think about other aspects of where wherever they go wherever the money is and it makes yeah. sense you know what i'm saying it's very logical for sure um but i just know as a um as both a musician and someone that's really interested in this i wish i could partner up with like uh an elon musk kind of person and just yeah. basically tell them what to do because you know, a lot of times they don't understand what it's like to be a musician, right? Yeah. So if they had that perspective, yeah. then we can create, we can create this. I mean, it's no, there's no reason not to have this available. It's really resources, man, for sure. I feel like, like if you put a plastic resources. dome 
around someone's head that would replicate the live music experience you know i don't know i'm not a engineer i like i like that though (laughs) like like that sounds good because because no like i don't have your perspective so when you're sitting here talking passionately about live music i'm like yeah there is a qualitative difference when you go to the restaurant right and then there's like live music there versus it on the speakers and I'm sure you could replicate it with some some good speakers, right? Yeah. It's a good surround sound system, but well, yeah. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you something, uh nothing beats live music, but for a reason, it's actually physics. Yeah. Because of the um so speakers, even good speakers have can only transmit mm-hmm. uh, a certain amount of resonance through its speakers. Like when someone plays an instrument in front of you, mm-hmm. everything is resonating. You know, uh, if you, you know, with like string theory and all that shit, okay. like, you know, yeah. everything's like constantly moving and whatnot. Yeah. So live music actually, uh, it's like you actually feel the vibration of uh, of them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's kind of I mean, deep. like the, and, the actual people yeah. are there. The actual people are there emoting their energy. So whether whatever your beliefs yeah. are in, in the spiritual realm and energy, I mean, I think it, it it's actually a real thing. Right, yeah. the person actually being there, even if they're on the concert stage and you're actually hearing it through some loudspeaker, I mean, they're actually there, right, right in front of you, regardless of how physically far they are. Yeah, yeah that's right, that's right, and and sound travels far. And like, look, you know, um, when when someone is uh, performing or or whatever, like the the resonance of their entire body, you know, is being uh, sent mm-hmm. to you versus in a, a digital form where they replicate it with ones and zeros. That's basically mm-hmm. what's happening when you're hearing music through speakers. It, it's a replication mm-hmm. of what it kind of sounds like Yeah, yeah. all so, the time. You can never mm-hmm. get it to be exactly right. You so know? even with like all this technology and this streaming, mm-hmm. it's still still not where you wanna be because you're, you're still about like the live performance, right? Oh my God, yeah. Uh, it's all about the audience, man, mm-hmm. for sure. Like, you know, uh, when I was performing, look, I was performing almost every day, Mm -hmm. you know, and, um, whether it be for free or just like, you know, an actual gig, but regardless, Mm -hmm. I was playing every day. And, um, part of the reason that it was so good is because of the fact that you were playing for people, you Mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like Mm -hmm. what's the use if you're just performing for yourself, that's Mm -hmm. only fulfilling up to a certain degree. But Mm -hmm. you know, when, when you're really connecting with the audience through the sonic medium, it's, it's something that, um it's it can be it's it's something that we really miss Mm -hmm. beyond just Mm -hmm. like the fact that we don't have (laughs) our gigs anymore it's more Mm -hmm. like hey we can't play for people that's like really a drag you know um yeah just feeding off the audience energy like you know whenever they you know it's kind of like a validation thing and like, mm, you know, yeah, of course. push you forward and you go like, yeah, man, you know, and like then you the comedian, if back. people are clapping and laughing, it, it, you know, he, he's telling jokes and telling them with even more energy. Right. Exactly. And even the ones that pander, right. You yeah. see the good comedians, they know how to deal with, I love comedians by the way. Yeah. It, they know how to deal with like people that are really rowdy in the yeah, audience. Yeah. It, they don't, they don't freak out. You know what I'm saying? Like some uh, comedians I've seen, they, they freak out. And <laughs> I know they're not good comedians because yeah they obviously never dealt with that situation and don't know how to control it. But the ones that do, yeah. it, they turn it around quickly, you know? Um, yeah. So that's what I'm talking about. Like uh, audience dynamics, man. That's, that's something hard, hard to replicate. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Hard to so, replicate. So we know that you're a jazz musician, right? But mm-hmm. does that necessarily mean that you're listening to jazz music? What are your own personal you know, like hip hop, alternative, like what, what, what has inspired you? Dude, I, you know, um, yeah, I, you know, in terms of what I, how should I put this? So yes, jazz for me is kind of like, uh, you could say it's kind of like my specialty in terms of like what I kind of know the most about, Mm -hmm. but in terms of like what I enjoy and what makes me, uh, want to just be a musician Mm -hmm. it's like dude it's like anything you know Mm -hmm. i mean like i don't i don't have any bias uh maybe against country music but that's about it (laughs) (laughs) but no no but okay so so old school country music (laughs) dude yes yeah yeah the the, the, some of the new stuff yeah you know like definitely not um but i'll tell you you know anything that's like um 
I believe in like if it's good music, it's good music, and yeah. even, even if it's bad music, it's just not for me. I yeah, just I don't yeah. say it's bad music. I just yeah. say it's not for me. Yeah, yeah. If people somebody like still it. likes it, right? Yes, yeah, somebody yeah. likes it. You know, whether they be crazy or not, but they, yeah. <laughs> they still like it. You know. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like uh, recently, so I just found uh, I'm really into like animation. Mm, um, okay. Well, you know, I love anime myself, but like just as a uh, from an artist perspective, I just think it's really impressive, right? Um, so I was going down this YouTube spiral last night mm -hmm. and I found this uh, channel, Snail Chan, mm -hmm. or something like he, basically this person creates like this kind of hyper happy Japanese techno mm -hmm. kind of fused music, but then they have like this awesome animation that goes with it. Mm. I just think that's so cool. Like, and um, I don't know, like a lot of people don't like that music. But I think the combination of the two just fits so well, you know, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. and it's stuff like that that makes me, um, I don't know, just really appreciate like uh, music in general and makes me want to create something that is not just genre based. I want to create something that is like a, co a combination of what I love hearing and what I grew up with, you know, it's, I didn't grow up with jazz. I grew up in the Taiwanese family, man. Mm -hmm. Like. They, they're not listening to like Miles Davis and John mm -hmm. Coltrane. They're listening to mm -hmm. like classical music and mm -hmm. Taiwanese like um, karaoke songs, mm -hmm. right? So, mm -hmm. um, to say that like you know I only listen to, um, I I would never. I don't think in my life I would ever be like yeah I just listen to jazz. I think at this point I just whenever whenever someone suggests something good I check it out because I I give them the benefit of the doubt. I go like okay let's see you know. Mm -hmm. A lot of times I end up liking it. I just I just love. I just love sonic sounds. <laughs> well, I'm uh, I'm gonna pull up your your album not now, but maybe like for the closing credits. By, oh, yeah. f from now until then, I'll find it and then I'll I'll play it for uh, the. Yes, uh, uh, the, yeah. it's called With Respect, and it's right under my name. All um, right, you can find it on iTunes or, but <laughs> talking about platforms, uh, Spotify, YouTube. Um, it's also on my channel, mm -hmm. so you you can see it there as well. Um, but yeah, so that's that's kind of like what's happening uh inside my head at least when it comes to music mm -hmm. uh, but man like whatever is good i i grew up listening to like um some friends have introduced like some metal to me mm -hmm. <laughs> while i was in high school yeah and i just really i just really dug that stuff especially symphonic power metal like nightwish was my does, does metallica qualify for your list uh yeah kind of kind like of. i was i was like more into um it was like a combination uh type it wasn't like completely just like metal like rock oriented right uh -huh. it was more like uh i liked the strings that uh -huh. were like the symphonic power metal yeah nightwish was like my that and camelot was another mm -hmm. band that i really liked uh but uh, but yeah, man, like a lot of things come from jazz though. And a lot of people don't know that, but okay. you no, know, uh, it's, it's true though. Like you, you look at the progression of music. Um, well, first of all, all American popular music is black music. Uh, let's just be yep. real about that. Yeah, and yeah. I think people need to recognize that for what it is. And so like, uh, when we're start talking about the progression of rock and roll and, you know, you see like people like Elvis Presley, you know, yeah. look, they all stole that shit. Yeah every one every single white person that became famous in whatever popular american music yeah. stole it from a black Damn. musician straight up and yeah. you know you look at Mo. actually if you look at motown a lot of the yeah. early motown um artists are jazz artists actually yeah. uh so uh, ska yeah. ska also uh before it was known as like you know this kind of white frat like yeah. music uh it's it's like uh it's origin origins is like uh, these jazz musicians that were just uh, playing in a different style. <laughs> they wow. play the same songs, you know, uh, if you look at the Scottalites, which is one of the most early uh -huh. bands, you know, Scottalites, you look at the history, okay. the Scottalites. Yeah. So, you know, you, you dig deep enough and you go like, Oh yeah. Like, okay. Wow. <laughs> That's what I figured. You know? um, so j jazz, you know, being one of the first popular music in America. Yes. It used to be popular, you know, people would, buy and you know go see jazz like constantly um yeah it was uh, a lot of music has derived a lot of influence has derived from the roots which is blues mm -hmm. jazz you know 
yeah for sure so so i'm going to ask you this question for personal reasons are, are you uh familiar or do you like it all nirvana or lincoln park one of my my two favorite bands <laughs> yes well of course you know how can you not like you know it's one of those things i mean yeah i mean you say that up. but some people like who you know i mean i don't know well we grew yeah. up in the you know we're not, i mean we are a little bit farther apart but like yeah, yeah like i grew up in that era look you know yeah. like um i can still rock out do some Lincoln Park. In the well, I was asking you because you're at the trombone back there. Would you, for the sake of live me, would you play something that I might be familiar with? With the you got your, oh, dude, your instrument I, back uh, there. It's it's so it's, so I'm actually on the East Coast. Yeah. So I can't. I I live in a place where I'm not allowed to play past a certain time. So I did, I wouldn't yeah. even think about that. <laughs> that that logistical issue, right? It's a logistical issue. Yeah, yeah. I forget. Uh, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. No. Uh, ma- okay, yeah. so actually, one of the things I do is I play. F- if do you know Final Fantasy? Yeah, I yeah, yeah. Okay, so I actually uh, have <laughs> a YouTube channel and a Facebook page that is uh, I do covers oh, okay. of Final Fantasy music. Yes. Only with trombones and drums. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I think you. I think you'll dig it because it's. Uh, <laughs> Well, it's pretty well, hilarious. Well, would you do that for me one day? Do like a Nirvana trombone cover? If oh, you yeah. haven't already, I would. Man, that would make my day, Dude, man. Uh, so we we play um, uh, "Smell Like Teen Spirit." Uh, oh, oh on, beautiful! But come we, on. we play that with a brass band. Yes, Dude, it's, yes. It's Dude, so I, good. come on, man. So yeah. <laughs> thank you, so thank you. Like talk. You know, I was gonna mention this earlier. Like what you do, right? Mm-hmm. I don't know if you've used this exact term, but that's you know fusion music, like what people do with food. Um, I'm literally uh, helping. So yeah, I'm helping my friend right now get his restaurant mm-hmm. off the ground. His name is Darren Lai. I met him through the same uh, the on okay. group. Yeah, he uh, he and he happens to just live a few miles away from me, right? So I was like, hey, oh, yeah, cool. man. Yeah, I was like, I do marketing and photography. I'm like, I'm like, bro, I'll help you out. So I've been, but he does uh, Asian fusion, and his now um, his signature, one of his signature dish is uh, curry fries. Literally Thai curry fries, Yo. top topped with korean brisket beef and uh yeah exactly right Yo. if you like like french fries and you like thai curry and you like korean dude brisket, i've been combining fries and curry for years oh you have right? just just like as a you know just because i have curry and yeah. then i buy some fries and i go like this is perfect together and people think it's disgusting but i'm like yo this is the shit i mean like if you don't like yeah. either one of those things sure but if you like all three of those things right i mean it's like music that you don't like sure man there's gonna be a few people who don't like it but i mean but yeah i mean like you know the like, audience for it yeah like fusion you might um introduce someone who never knew they like curry but they like fries mm-hmm. you know and then you kind of mix the cultures together S- same thing you're doing with music maybe you know some people like this music some people like that music and you blend it together and you bring different cultures together and you create a new culture in the process right that was that was my premise of my first album dude mm-hmm. like totally like there's this generation that's above me that's like my parents that yeah. don't have any connection with jazz and yeah. then using this music medium to um you know help them bridge that gap and it's also bridging gap between communities as well yeah. whenever you fuse anything you know you're combining cultures and like you know you're combining people basically right and um you know i i really do believe that like yeah i i love the idea that america is basically like this giant experimentation ground that <laughs> yeah. it goes bad but <laughs> <laughs> but usually uh there are some really great things that come from it and part of it is is what you're talking about, like the shared culture, um, you know, finding commonalities, but also celebrating differences. You know, I'm mm-hmm. really, it's a, it's a beautiful thing. Um, I really love uh, curry fries. That's <laughs> yeah, man. Well, if you ever come to LA, I, I will hook you up. You look us up next time. Okay. Yeah, he's he's getting his restaurant off the That's ground. Awesome. What, what's gonna, the name of it? Uh, Cafe D, and then uh, Cafe his D. name's. Darren, so I don't know if if the D is for Darren or it probably is, but the cafe part is really interesting. The cafe, C A F A, if uh-huh. I can remember, it stands for Collective Asian Food Fuse. Experiment Fusion. I don't know, but some I'm like, wow, that is very simple and it has a lot wow. of meeting. Yeah, something. Uh, Dude, but, that's uh, awesome. Yeah, I'll send you the, the the link later, and you definitely look us up if you're in L A. Um, I, I, before moving on to the next topic, I, I had, man, man, my ADD, I had a really good question. If I don't write them down, I, I forget. Um, we were talking about celebrating differences 
and oh the exper um like because you had mentioned america is a giant experimentation and, and like new york is not too much unlike la like a big melting pot you know oh new, yeah new york is a little bit more faster paced like in la it's more like surfer dude you know smoking pot right <laughs> this is what i hear right like there's literally um weed yeah. shops are as like plentiful as Starbucks now, literally, right? I don't know what are the laws like in New York now. Well, well, New Jersey just uh, legalized marijuana in oh, the latest. There we uh, go. Yeah, so so we're getting there. New York is always slow, man. And I don't know why, but they always are. Um, politics, man. Bureaucracy. Yeah, politics, dude. <laughs> but um, no, it's it's definitely uh, yeah. In, in terms of like just that vibe, yeah. Uh, you know, jazz musicians love to you know love to smoke. Um, that's that's for sure, and. Uh, well, I don't want to generalize, but I, I would say most of the musicians I met love to smoke, and it would be nice. If I mean, there's could. something to be said about the nice uh, the creative process in weed. You know, you can't mm -hmm. deny it, right? Oh God, no, yeah. no way. Uh, music. Uh, one thing I would love to do when I was in college, uh, I went to uh, William Patterson and Rutgers for jazz studies performance. Yeah. Um, but you know, a lot of things that me and my friends like to do was definitely like smoke a lot and uh listen to to john coltrane um and uh the music would just pop out in ways that it's just never really popped out before and right. it's you know and it's like not even because i'm high it's like because i'm actually focused like i could get a similar feeling mm -hmm. when i'm listening without mm -hmm. any drugs mm -hmm. kind of <laughs> but you know for the most part like i those, those <laughs> things are a little bit more uh logical yeah and, and it's, well well like and then i was gonna say also because i'm in a weird area where uh, if you're familiar with like the the L main la little pockets i'm in east la which uh okay. it, it, when we're here east la is generally um like hispanic area and uh -huh. but i'm uh also um right bordering like where East LA is, is Alhambra and Monterey Park, where the Chinese and Taiwanese people end up going. Like there's Chinatown, that's right in downtown, a few miles east okay. where it is, is kind of where everyone goes to settle and, um, and it spreads for many miles from here. But, but my point is that like, you know, you were saying, you know, America is a big experimentation ground. I'm in an area where Asians, like yellow skinned Asians like me live right bordered to Hispanics. And there is a grocery store where I, I go, like right on the border. There are like Asians on one side, Hispanics on the other. You go to this grocery store and that, and you see Asians and Hispanics. And I don't know anywhere else it, that I've heard of that like that's the, you know, right? The, the two <laughs> cultures that you, you see mixed together, you know, like you literally have like wealthier Asians and, and then the blue collar Hispanics. And then it's just like normal for everybody. You know, so talk about like experimentation. Is there like a similar mm -hmm. area in, in New York where it's it's Asians and Hispanics like just literally forced to um, interact with each other? Yeah, um, I think that's like kind of, at this point, it kind of is like all of New York City for the most part. There are still pockets mm -hmm. that are mm -hmm. like specifically like one racial identity, basically. Mm -hmm. And, you know, part of it is socioeconomical reasons, but um, in terms of like seeing a lot of this mixture i'm trying to think like in flushing it's mostly yeah it's i would say it's it's um a larger uh east asian and um hispanic uh mm -hmm. community for sure um you're going to see that in queens yeah flushing um you know i you know harlem is still mostly african-american however mm -hmm. uh you know there's always gentrification going on mm -hmm. unfortunately and um but yeah i mean i would say for the most part i have yeah it's hard to walk through new york city and not have this feeling of like wow it's, it's literally everything i mm. you know i've, I've seen the mex uh i've seen some mexican korean uh mm. fusion things this was recently i was like mm -hmm. wait what <laughs> you know usually i i hate putting cheese in any yeah. dish yeah but um you know it's kind of like normal and, and like uh hispanic like uh you know situation so uh yeah there's a lot of that for sure you'll, speaking, you'll see speaking of mexican korean i gotta i gotta tell you man there was like and then <laughs> and this restaurant was serious and they were pretty good but i will have to tell uh -huh. you man 
Uh, I wish like I had planned, like you had told me and I could pull up the logo on this. Maybe I could, you know what? Maybe I will search for it while I'm telling you. There was this restaurant. They went out of business and uh-huh. partially maybe is because they had a very racist logo, but it was, <laughs> it was called Uh-oh. Cha-Cha Chili. It was a Mexican Korean fusion in my, and they were successful for quite a few years. I don't, they didn't go out of business because COVID. They went out of business probably because people were like that, like that is the, but they had, Okay, uh, their logo was a dude wearing a sombrero, first of all, all right? Okay. And then the guy had a mustache, right? And he had fucking chinky-ass eyes like this with the sombrero. And then we, and I'm like, is this a fucking joke? No, they're serious. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, it's funny, though, because there are Hispanic people that look like that. Oh, uh, Because man. there is... Yeah. Well, historically, there is uh, some mix. Um, so That's originally, yeah. Asians uh, that came to like North America region and South America regions, um, some were in South America, and there there is a actual uh, like thing about like Mexican and and Chinese. That's like a real like uh, okay pocket of people and and culture. So yeah, like. <laughs> <laughs> not, not as uh ra- you know it's funny what people get um... do you see that right there <laughs> okay that's, that's what this dude looks like the fucking funny. the fucking fu manchu mustache the sombrero okay, that's, that's and the goddamn... <laughs> i mean this was their fucking thing for years and then they were, you know me and my girlfriend we went to support we're like dude probably yeah. like the husband and wife one's hispanic and one's chinese and they were like hey hey this make like no racism in- intended what? Yeah. So we, I, we you know, yeah. I, yeah, I, I look at it and I'm not, I'm not really. Let's put it uh, back up. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not like <laughs> they're serious. It's definitely <laughs> pretty serious. They're serious about this. They did it, and they were yeah. doing okay. But they, for whatever reason, yeah. you know, they went out of business. I mean, we tried to support them. We were like, you know what? They're yeah. not. Like, I understand someone could get offended, and this is why, you know, uh, the big victim mentality. You know, like you, you got to be. Yeah, I can see why that's offensive, right? But you gotta <laughs> see. I'm look, willing to look past what it is and look at their intentions, right? They're trying to yeah. fuse two things together, you Dude, know? Yeah. And, you know, here's my take on that. Like, I feel like people get offended because they don't actually have any communication with people outside their circles. Yeah. Like when you actually go and commute, like for example, um, you know, as a jazz musician. Um, I am often in the place that I am not with my own kind <laughs> at I the mean, end of the I day. Mean, yeah, you I know? mean, let's, let's, uh, moving on to the, like, I think you even mentioned you wanted to talk about this earlier, like, like how Asian American identity plays into our craft. Why don't we just segue into that and, and kind of explain, like, dude, you're, you're Asian dude getting into, like, an obvious black industry, right? How has that been? How did you even break in? What kind of racism did you face, if any? You know, and how did you overcome all that? Yeah. Um, so, like nowadays, when we talk about jazz, a lot of people don't associate it associate it with like um, black culture as much. Mm-hmm. And I think part of the reason is because of the fact that it, uh, white academia has really uh, taken a stronghold over the the message of what jazz is but when you actually look at it or when you understand the roots it is a black american music you know that's at the Mm -hmm. heart of it that is what the music has been brought up as that's what Mm -hmm. it has been perpetuated as and that's what it is you know and so um you know for me i grew up in a white suburban neighborhood Mm -hmm. you know and mostly italians you know um and there was like one black person at our school you know what i'm saying like Mm -hmm. it was like what that what that kind of level of uh Mm -hmm. ignorance and so like um i so when i went to school for for jazz um i didn't know anything about Mm -hmm. like black culture i I didn't even really know anything about like uh I would say anything, <laughs> you know, like just straight up, straight <laughs> yeah. up. I was, I was so ignorant. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, um, 
and and part of the reason you know obviously it's like growing up in a household where like you know there are subtle racist yeah. comments being thrown around Dude, right all, all asian parents are racist man let's just let's just yeah be let's, honest, let's be real know? about yeah. that yeah for sure and we have to it, that's one thing we should be acknowledging yeah. more often right yeah. um and, and bring up but anyway so basically uh what happened was uh, when I was at William Patterson, which uh, is there is a higher percentage of uh, black people at that school. Yeah. I think it's more like a 40 percentage. OK. Right. Which right, for right. me was a big, huge, huge difference. A, You're huge like, what, difference. what's going on? I don't even did I get go to a different country. So, yeah. yeah how, how exactly. Was that? Yeah, exactly. Um, you know, a lot of my racist inner like, you know, just the subconscious level yeah. was kicking in. Right. Yeah. So every single time I would see a black person, I would act differently or like yeah. I would talk differently or like I would feel different, you know, and it's so it's so fucked up. Like when yeah. I obviously when I think about it, when I say it, it always yeah. sounds fucked up. But I mean, it's at true. The same time, and it's I applaud you for, yeah. for admitting, you know, and then um, and then what yeah, happened be real about it? Yeah. You know, um, so then what happened was it was just like a constant um I went, so I had to go outside of school because school was only perpetuating the same thing that uh, white academia does, which is, yeah. oh, jazz is a combination of European and yeah. African rhythm, oh, wow. which is co completely not uh, true in yeah. terms of like, if you really look at the histor history yeah. and what it actually sounds like, like no one thinks that. Yeah. <laughs> so basically I had to go to the actual place where music was happening okay. and where the music was happening is basically in the hood and not in like like white uppity you know suburban yeah. towns right yeah. and that's where the music has always been cultivated yeah. and where it has always um you know been like praised and, and whatnot so like uh, i started going to places like jersey city and um harlem and um mm -hmm. yeah, like newark you know and places that like i was extremely uncomfortable and uh it took some like you know conversations with my um mostly other you know hip either hip white friends or like you know black people that were willing to put up with my ignorance at yeah. the time <laughs> you know like that it took some coaxing but basically what it was was uh it was a deep unlearning process mm. and uh i started to read more i started to read a ton of, of suggested books uh i read some selections by amiri baraka blues people it's a great um it's a great book you could call it that mm -hmm. uh, it's a message you know mm -hmm. um that he put out into the world and it's um it changed my life of how i perceive <clears throat> like jazz music in general you mm -hmm. know and and just <clears throat> general like you know trying to put yourselves in the shoe of like being a black american you know citizen here if you want to say that you know mm -hmm. um so <clears throat> yeah it was, it was a deep unlearning process a lot of uh yeah hanging out with like older black people that mm -hmm. would tell you like you know you know things that no one else is going to tell you yeah. <laughs> you know an, an asian parent's not going to tell you like yeah. and um it's it's pretty uh it's pretty awakening um it's it's uh I don't know how to explain it. It's, it's complicated. You know what I'm saying? Cause like do. as an Asian American, yeah. I don't want, I, you don't ever want to speak on another person's culture and yeah. be like, yeah, I know everything about like yeah. other people, you know, like I never do that. But something I, I do know is that the, um, the constant exposure is what's really important. And the constant communication with other communities is what is really, uh, at the exposure. end of the day yeah that's yeah. true that's true like the more <laughs> we stay isolated in our own environments the more that just breeds racist it, attitudes yeah exactly and misunderstandings a lot of it's uh uh deep misunderstandings between communities um but as, as an asian american inside jazz in terms of like how i feel as, as an individual it's um you often feel like the mediator mm. <laughs> i say this quite a bit because I play in all white big bands quite a bit and I play in like all black, you know, bands as well. And oftentimes they'll come up to me and treat me like I'm one of them. Mm. Right. Mm -hmm. Because they don't see you as a mm. offender. They don't see you as like the other, they kind of just, well, they do. That's mm -hmm. the, <laughs> they, they see you as like the perpetual uh, foreigner, which is a common stereotype of mm -hmm. Asian people here mm -hmm. in America. Right. Mm -hmm. um, but they also, uh, treat you like oh you know 
I can talk to you about anything because you're not going to say anything about it. I, I know exactly what you mean. Yeah. <laughs> you know, they're, they're like being willing to be open because of the fact that like you're Asian, you look Asian. Right. But like, you know, deep inside me, I'm just like, uh, you know, I, I, I know, I know why they say, why they're trying to say what they're trying to say. And, um, I don't know. It's, it's a pretty funny position to be in where basically, um, you, you know, it's always like, Oh, I don't know anything about Asian. So let me just tell you everything about being a white person or a black person or, you know what I mean? Like it's, uh, I feel like a sponge a lot of times. Yep, uh, yep. yeah. A racial sponge. <laughs> racial. So, so man, I, I, I want to bring this up. I have no other way. And I didn't think I would ever like be talking about this on stream, but, um, talking about like uh, black culture and acceptance. And, um, mm. I just feel like I want to share this personal story because I've, I feel sure. for me, it's a badge of honor, right? I had like uh -huh. a, a group of black people that I was hanging around with and they had referred to me as the N word, no hard R. And, you know, mm. they was, they said, Hey, N word to me. And I was like, I was like, I'm one of you guys, you know, you know what I'm saying? That doesn't give me the right to use it yet, but I'm like, whoa, you know, like, uh, what? Wow, you know, yeah. I, you know, they say, hey, and like, I was like, oh shit, it's like, like that Dave Chappelle skit. I, I don't like know the, what sh what skit are you talking the, the about? The very first one. Man, uh, I, don't, I don't have to think back on it. it. Is it, it the racist uh, where he's the the blind the yeah, blind? Yep. Oh, the yeah. And, oh, and yeah. he drive. They, they're driving past uh, this group of white kids that's listening to rap, and and Dave Chappelle gets out of the car. And he's like, "Stop listening to that n word music," you know. And he's like, and the white people are like, "Did he just call us the n word?" <laughs> word you know like they're like really happy like yeah Dude, <laughs> so, i'm so i'm so old that like i have seen that but i forgot that first well, part i just rewatched yeah. all the dave chappelle episodes I gotta because watch, on netflix now, yeah I, I, so. I remember like the the blind black guy uh, <laughs> racist but i don't remember and then but i mean it's weird yeah. because i experienced it like over a couple decades mm -hmm. after i saw that but like i i was like man it was yeah. such a feeling of acceptance you know what i'm saying like they saw me as one of them, it, it, it goes beyond just like a funny ha ha story. It was actually, Oh like, yeah, no, it's for it's me. A, it's, it was a very touching moment. Yeah. I yeah. was like, all right, I don't feel comfortable enough using that word yet. You know, mm -hmm. I don't think I ever will, but I was like, wow, man, I've, you know, like that's like, like real bro love right there. Yeah, no, definitely. It's, it's deep. Uh, I think that's something within African American culture that is not, um, it's this, uh, you know, whenever they say you're a brother, you know, it's like, it's deeper than, <laughs> you know, than just being like, yeah, you're a cool person. Like, it's literally like you are, I accept you as like another human that I really connect with. And yeah. I, I think that's really, that's something that's really deep. And um, yeah, I, I've definitely had that situation a couple of times where I feel uncomfortable, right? Because I'm like, oh, I'm just... I'm just here to, you know, play the music. But I don't want to like intrude. Right. Yeah, I'm always in yeah, that position. Yeah. But a lot of times they're like, no, go ahead, go ahead, brother. Like, yeah. you know, do your thing, you know? And that to me, that's really, um, it feels, it feels good. But I also have to take it back a step and, and also realize like, uh, it's what, uh, I don't know if you're into Paul Mooney, but he says, oh, everyone yeah, wants yeah. to be an N word, but nobody wants to be an N word. <laughs> Dude, Paul Mooney, you know? yeah, Paul Mooney's yeah, it's got so the best true. quotes. Yeah. Oh my God, he does. Yeah, because it's so real. But like, yeah, and he it's, delivers it's true, it with you know? with such a straight face. You're like, what? Well, how do you make this guy laugh? I don't think I've ever <laughs> seen him laugh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's uh, he's like super serious. Yeah. But the thing is, he is super serious. It's just because like it's so um, it's so mind blowing what he's saying. Sometimes it's it's literally like. It's oh so, yeah it's so yeah. true it's people funny. laugh at the yeah. yeah at the truth the people laugh at the truth you know you're a good comedian people are laughing at the truth that's what that's man what you is. know what you know? like the thing is i could never be a comedian but it's like the funniest things i say are like when i'm being serious and i'm like how can i <laughs> replicate i can't because i'm like you can't comedians are trying to be funny and then just once in a while i accidentally hit the mark you know um <laughs> yeah i know what you mean i know exactly what you mean Funny by accident. Yeah. Uh, which is... <laughs> I mean, on, on that note, man, I'm on your Spotify playlist right now with mm -hmm. respect. If I if I had to pick a song to leave the audience with, like we hit the hour mark easy. We actually ran over yeah, yeah. 
Usually oh, it's like I got to make up shit and make up questions, man. So I call this a, a good fucking episode. Yeah. Man, what what, no, what, I, what I really song would it. you want me to, to leave the audience with? Um, so there's uh, one called uh, uh, Sweet as Honey. I got that, that, was, right a good, that was a good track. Yeah, All right, I'm going to hit good play track. right now. Yeah. All right. All right, we're going to uh, play it off, right? I'm, I'm, I'm going to play it for, uh, I don't know. We can just talk over it. Like you don't hear it right now. It's, it's blasting on my side. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. yeah we, just, we just leave, leave the audience with that. I, I'll let it play for at least like a minute before I, before I end the recording. It's really good. To talk to I, I knew this was going to be good because. artwork you know this is my artwork that's i uh like dude if i become the asian joe Logan and i get fucking 100 million dollars like great but like it, it right now it's my art is not fucked up by any type of monetary interest and i and i keep my shirt off because that's how i roll because audience <laughs> can't make me put my shirt on because I, I wore the suit and the tie for so many years and i and i felt like that was like conforming to the norm so much, you know? So this is my non-conforming, like... If it's cold, I'll put on the shirt. I do what's practical for me. Yeah, no, I, I like it, man. It's, it's a good... Uh, yeah, that's a good way of doing it. And this, this is actually the same podcast like that. Uh, wait, wait by the audience, man. I'll talk to you for a few minutes off, off stream. Uh, okay.